Well, hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'm gonna to watercolor some transparent tulips and do a little testing as well. But you know me, I don't like to just test. I like to make something out of it. But I'm also part of an Ellen Hudson design team blog hop today. So you're gonna to wanna to go check the link in the description to go see what everybody else is creating today. Today, we are going to talk about watercolors, and this is my Daniel Smith dot card. If you haven't seen it yet, it has a little bit of paint of each of my favorite colors on it. And these are the colors that are in my palette. And you can paint with them. Just take your little brush and a little bit of water, and you can actually paint with these pigments. This color I'm showing you is the quinacridone gold. And a couple months ago, they ran out of the stuff they make quinacridone gold with, so they reformulated. So I'm going to test those two, and I'm going to use silver brushes. These are the 12 and 8 round. I'm going to use the 12 and the 8 you could use to make small tulips, but you're going to probably want a bigger brush to do these kind of tulips with. I'm going to squirt out a little bit of each of the two paints. I'm going to do it on a tile. It's just an 89 cent tile from the hardware store and you can put things into pans and stuff into a fancy palette or you can just use them on a tile like this. You could leave that and let it dry and just repaint from it again, which is what I'm gonna do is use up all this beautiful quinacridone. And I am going to make flower petals. And I'm gonna slowly add more and more water and show you how many shades you can get out of one, two, or shall we say one blob, one color, when you've got really good quality watercolors. Sometimes you can't do as much, can't get as broad a range with others, or they start looking I guess watered down when they get into the lighter colors as opposed to just looking like lighter colors. But here I'm adding water to it. I'm not picking up more pigment. I'm just gonna go rinse just a tiny bit, add a little bit more water. And you can see I keep getting lighter and lighter colors, but there's enough pigment in there to make it look like I'm painting. I'm not just kind of using something that's all washed out. And that's what I love about quinacridone gold. So that was the old one that has been around forever and they ran out of the stuff they make it with. So Daniel Smith went back and reformulated and they made a new one. So I've been doing some testing and I'll show you here a little bit, but I haven't found any major differences between them. Uh, there's a little bit more dullness to the new one, maybe slightly, but I wouldn't really say it's enough to bother me because unless I did them side by side, I wouldn't know that. And it doesn't seem to make any difference when I'm mixing with other colors. So I'm not concerned about that. So the only way to know that whether or not you're getting the old or the new is, I don't know, there's some way you can find out, I'm sure, but don't worry about it. Whichever one you get is fine. <laughs> if you end up buying from a store that's had it around a while, you may get the old one. If they turn over their inventory, then you'll be getting the new one. So this one is a tulip that we're going to be painting. So with a tulip, you just paint those petals that I've been showing you already and just paint them in a V. So we're going to paint that as our base. And I'm gonna do first what you should not do. And I'm gonna show you why you should not do that. Um, you can use heavier pigment, you can use lighter pigment. You can make really light yellow tulips and you can make darker yellow ones. It really depends on what you wanna paint. And you can do the same thing with a lot of other Daniel Smith colors. They, a lot of them have this beautiful range that you can get out of them because they're very high quality watercolor paints. So I'm going to paint another one down here of each one while I wait for the other ones to dry because my intent was not to do the bad thing first, but you'll see shortly that I ended up doing that. So rinsing my brush and I'm going to paint another one from the old over here to a light yellow one. And with these, you want to let it dry completely. Now I like to let it air dry because I don't end up getting the curling of the paper. I actually don't even tape my paper down when I'm, doing stuff, sometimes I'll clamp it down if I'm doing some major um, major work, but I don't tape my tape paper down. And if I heat dry it, I end up getting curling. But I did not wait long enough because you're gonna see each one of these, instead of being like right there, it was just perfect. And then that left side just started slowly bleeding. <laughs> so there you go. This is the what not to do page, but it is a practice page and you can practice on scrap paper, you can practice on the back of a painting that you've wrecked. So don't throw away the ones that you've wrecked. Use them for things like this. Practice making these petals. See if you can do it with two strokes. Boom, boom, done. But the more I work with any of these, you can watch it just get mushy there. It's not a clean, graphic, transparent look. And you'll see the difference when we get to painting these on cards in a minute. 
And here I just ran out of room. I was trying to work around that flower, did not do so good, and there I have a mess. But I learned something from it, and so it's a worthwhile mess, right? Nothing is a waste. I have trimmed my paper so that I have these long strips, and you can get whatever business envelopes you have and measure what size your card would be. And then if you wanna have a card base that shows a little bit, leave a little bit extra room so that you have a little bit of that showing. So I'm gonna do green card bases and have that peek out from underneath of my panel. But I'm gonna do a couple of tulips cascading down this long skinny card. And I think the size on this one was like three and a half by nine-ish, a little less than nine or something but your business envelopes could be different size because they do. there's some of them that come in slightly different size, I found out. Found out the hard way one time when I thought I had a size in my head for what they all should be, and that did not turn out to be the case. So I'm gonna continue painting my flowers, try to decide on what my layout will be. Now you could take a piece of, say, computer paper and just throw on some flowers real quick. They're not gonna look beautiful and be gorgeous watercolor, but you could get an idea for what your layout's going to be of your flowers and know where you want each one of them to be. I'm just kind of throwing them on there and just making it up as I go and trying to decide how many is too many. And there is where I stopped and I let it completely air dry this time because I learned from my last piece of paper, which is a good thing. And I'm going to try to make my petals with as little strokes as I can so that I maintain that nice sharp edge on that center petal, that transparent one. Look how pretty that is. So gorgeous. And then continue painting my petals on all of these. Just give them a really quick stroke and not fuss with them too much. I don't want to push it too hard and start ending up getting a mess going. And while they were still damp, not soaking wet, they were damp enough I had to go find my sap green to put a little on my palette. But they're just a little bit damp and I love how a little bit of that green is merging into that bottom petal. It just gives it a little softer watercolor look, which is very pretty. And you could wait completely if you want them to be hard edged, but I love the fact that there's just a little tiny bit of bleed. Now if it's too wet, they're going to go all the way up into the petals and it's going to be a little crazy mess. So let it dry just a bit and then make the petals go all the way down. Now, if you're really nervous, you could get a ruler out and measure all of your lines and stuff, but I'm just making them by hand and by eye, not really stressing out about trying to make everything perfect. I just want these to be beautiful spring flowers. Now, I'll speed this second one up a little bit. I'm gonna do it a little bit more on the kitty wampus side and let my flowers go different directions. Instead of having them be all stately and elegant, It'll be a little more playful of a design and just trying something a little bit different just to see what happens if I do them this way. And will that beautiful transparent look still work in a whimsical way? So I'm gonna just kind of put them in different directions. And while I'm doing this, if you like doing flowers like this, just blank piece of paper, some paint and a brush, then you might like to look into the Fresh Florals class over on my teaching website on art-classes.com. I put that class up last year and we paint things like roses and snapdragons and other pretty flowers. And they're a lot of fun to just make something without any stamps, without any lines, without any sketching, just paint some flowers. It's a, kind of a fun class. And I also don't think I've mentioned here on YouTube that I have a new Facebook group for my students. So students of all the classes are all in one Facebook group because I cannot handle multiple Facebook groups. I'm a little crazy that way. And I try on a couple weekends a month to do an extra Facebook Live related to one of the classes. So even if you're not in that class, you can see a little bit of bonus content for them and join in on watching that and maybe get inspired to take a class when you see what other students are doing. You can get help from others if you need somebody who kind of speaks in non-artist language. If you are confused by me, there's lots of people there who love to talk about art and what they're learning and they help each other and all kinds of stuff. So I'll put a link in the description to the Facebook group and you can go and join. So there are my centers for these flowers and make sure when you're doing flowers that are different directions that your stems kind of go the same direction as the flowers pointing 
so that it doesn't look like my dog came through and lopped off all the heads of your flowers. <laughs> that happened to my tulips last year because I had puppies and one of my puppies did that to all of my, I have these, these tulips in the front grass that aren't supposed to be there, but I can't bear to dig them up because they're so pretty. They're pretty little purples and yeah, the dogs knocked them all over. So this is the paper that I used to make the card bases and I cut off that bottom edge and then made my, my, my eight by nine ish. I think it was for the card base. And then I had an extra scrap left. So I took that hello die and I die cut it by putting a little bit of this be creative tape on the back first. And that made it so that it was a sticker. So I could just stick it on the card wherever I wanted. And you can either leave a space for the sentiment like that, or you can uh, just stick it on top of a flower like I did. So there we go. There's your video for today. I will be back, I think, tomorrow with another video because it's crazy time right now. And I will see you then. Be sure to click on the link in the description to go to the blog hop and see more stuff from all the girls. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.